All right, guys, uh, Sam here. Now, uh, well, we're again mid-morning, no, uh, November 21st. Uh, good day to take a look at our old friend Ethereum, which is starting to get some traction. We're, we're heading back towards our previous highs. Um, it has been um, really just stuck in a range for the last uh, couple of months, really. Uh, it, but it's, it remains uh, very technical. So it's, it's some very tricky Elliott Wave uh, structure here that... Oh, maybe beyond um, this video, it's the kind of thing we go through uh, in the room amongst members. So you, you learn how to qualify and quantify this count such as we have it here so that it works and that you don't violate any uh, Elliott Wave rules. And I think we have the count... Uh, as it is uh, now, you know, of course, any count is uh, subject to relabeling per the price action. But I think we're uh, we, we've got a count here that works. Now, you can uh, a couple of things to show you is, of course, you when, whenever you see a five wave structure like this where you just can't can't help but miss it. Right. So, I mean, it's it's just absolutely textbook. Here's our wave one. Uh, it, the, the wave four doesn't overlap it. You know, again, that doesn't happen by accident. You start looking at that going, well, OK, is it trading technically? Well, here's here's one that I show you very often, just a great example of it. So there's the length of wake, wave one projected from our wave four and we go to the 100 to the tick right so very common for a fifth wave to top in fact if you saw the earlier video on bitcoin very common for for a fifth to top in that relationship 100 percent of the length of the one wave topping out at the fifth so interestingly it looks like we're coming up here potentially for a double top or we're going to you know get through it and you know, we're, we're, we're off to new highs. So pulling that off, knowing that it continues to trade technically, it's gotten very difficult here. Uh, this is a really tricky count. But a as we have it here, some things that we can rely on, r regardless of the intricacies of the Elliott Wave count structure here, we can look at simply working from swing low to swing high and we've cut we double bottomed at the 50 so we hit it once then hit it again so i think that that's a, a reasonable labeling here for a fourth um, and part of the reason that i am uh, qualifying that as a fourth as you can see here as i've labeled the one wave here in blue you can see that perfect uh, tap here not to overlap it but just just touches it without going through it that, that does not happen randomly. So here in conjunction with the algo buying at the 50 and not uh, violating this wave one high, I think high probability that we've got a fourth wave in here. So given that count, there's our one, our two, three, four going up for the fifth. Well, if we just again do some projecting and I'm going to take swing low to this high, projecting it from our fourth. Well, we're sitting here now at the 618. Right, that's what we, all, always one to consider. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different, so we know we're we're potentially close to a topping action. We've got our negative 23.6. That's the algo target, right in sync with the median line, so a likely target. So let me just pull some of this off, and we can look again. So if I go from the length of my one wave projected from my fourth. Well, so here I've got the, the 1618, so another contender. So you start putting these together like this, and given our, our algo target here, there's our 50. So we get an absolute perfect overlap of the 1618 of the wave 1 projected from the wave 4 in sync with the negative 23, which is our algo target, gives me a high probability that we're likely to, at the very least, get a reaction here. So... I'd be very surprised if we don't make it up here to these targets, uh, wick the median line, and, and at least see a reaction to that. Now, as to whether or not that tops there, you know, we, we remains to be seen. But be interesting to see wh what happens when we get back up to these these prior levels up here. Are we going to you know pause and then blow through? Are we going to retrace, which I think is more likely. So if we look at a completed structure here, a retracement, even if I just I know it gets there's a lot of lot of lines on here. But if we're going to come up to that, here's our here's our edge here of the of the pitchfork. Here's the the 38. Here's the 50. So potentially your next opportunity to be a buyer would be down here at this edge. But then if indeed, you know, keep in mind that if I go 
Now let me pull this all off just so to declutter the chart. If we make the assumption that we're completing a five-wave structure, well now, given that it's complete, we're looking for a retracement of the entire move, which potentially puts us back down here uh, 293. So that would be your 50% of this completed in blue here, this one, two, three, four, five. So potentially, you, you know, you, you're looking for a reaction here uh, remains to be seen because, of course, we could be relabeling. This could all just be a, a you know, a, a, a wave to a larger degree. But I think that this is um, high probability here that we're going to see a reaction as to how deep we get uh, a correction, assuming we get one, remains to be seen, but I would certainly be interested in seeing this move into a three-wave corrective structure, looking for the next opportunity to be long. All right, so let's uh, let's that's that's our four-hour. Let's take it down to the uh, one-hour. We can get a closer look at it. Where you got you've got some subdivision here that helps you with. This. So you can see this cluster here. I've, I've recreated it here. But it, coming into this, we're getting an ending diagonal. So here was our one, our two, our very deep four. So clearly now in a diagonal, and then we're getting a diagonal. Uh, we're getting an ending diagonal within an ending diagonal. So it, it, even within that diagonal, now we're finishing with an impulse. So take a look here. So in blue, we've got our this. So th thus these trend lines. So here's the diagonal in blue three, four, looking for the fifth up here. Here's, here would be the top of, of that structure. Now, within that, as we go into our fifth wave, we're getting an extension. So we get a diagonal within the fifth wave. So remember, we can only find a diagonal in a one wave, an A wave, or a fifth wave. So in the blue wave, in the blue degree, we're in our fifth wave. In, within that fifth wave, we've got subdivision here into five, creating an ending diagonal in the fifth of our ending diagonal. I, I, I know it gets, it's, it's, hard, it's harder to describe it than it is to see it. So within that ending diagonal, we get here in white a one, two, three. We overlap the one, so thus a diagonal. And then now we're finishing that with uh, a fifth wave impulse because we've got a one, two, three. Here's our four. We don't overlap the one. So we stay in an impulsive structure and likely putting in a fifth up here. So here it is in green. So all of this creating a confluence zone here, not to mention the market geometry with just a simple trend line on this upslope here, which we've hit one, two, three, would not surprise me if we hit it a fifth time here. And then potentially we're looking for a completed structure and the next next opportunity to be long if we're going to hit that. So once we have the box, then we can, we, we know it's there. We know it's significant. Then we can look at this as a completed structure. And if we pull uh, on the assumption that we, we, we top here, then our next opportunity to be a buyer because we'd be assuming that we'd be completing and looking for a two wave in a new structure. So we don't want to buy at the 38. That's low probability for a second wave. Our buy zone would be down here at the 50 looking for new highs, right? Stop under the 65. So that's that's kind of what we're watching for here. Remains to be seen. You know, we, we've got to determine that we've got a top in. Um, and then once we get that, we'll look for the next 50, right? With lots of lots of upside here. So, you know, e even off of that 50, then the next pull puts it up here. That's 395, all right? So that's off the one hour, all right? So the detail of this, that's all the kind of things that uh, that I teach you, uh, you know, as a member. Uh, and this is very tricky. This this, but it, you know, you define it through the the fib structure, right? So it's always fibs first. So what we do. The uniqueness of, of what I'm teaching you is that I'm combining the the algo uh, patterns that we see repeating over and over again in every market. And what, if you think of that, that's that's the dominant that that's the dominant structure. With the Elliott wave, we're just trying to get in and sort of surf behind the big wave that the algos are creating, and it allows us to kind of dart in and around what they're doing on the larger degree so that we're not taking this gigantic risk that like they will because they're they're working off of the daily the four hour the hourly and the 15 minutes so when we're looking for reasonable risk reward for the average trader 
it's it's this combination of the 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 algo structure and then building in around it and weaving around that the Elliott wave count so that we can find lower risk but with 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 high probability entries within that larger algo structure. That's that's really what I teach you. All right, guys. Okay, let's uh, let's let's wrap it there, and uh, perhaps we'll be back with a look at Litecoin. <laughs> 